Good afternoon, I'm here on a beautiful spring afternoon in a forest in Godstone, sitting in a little field, a little enclave of wild bluebells, which are, it's just about that time of year. You can see they're all just coming into bloom and they create these fantastic carpets of the most brilliant blue. And it's, it's wonderful. It really is kind of, you know, as a spatial effect, very calming. It's electrifying. It's rejuvenating. It's just really, really like the colors. I mean, this is why I feel, I'm so passionate about color, how important color is to have in our lives. It's very, very nurturing. It's very, you know, it kind of there's an energy that comes with it and a calmness and a peacefulness that comes with this delicate blue mist that is literally just sweeping the forest floor and um, it's interesting I've been dealing with a couple of clients recently and we've been talking about the colors of their house and I really do think color is one of the most underutilized elements in architecture and in, in design. Interior designers are much better than architects. Architects tend to use color quite crudely. Um, you know, some of the greats, Louis Barragans was one of the masters at using beautiful colors all through his Mexico homes. Um, you know, modern architects, Richard Rogers likes to throw a bit of color in there, you know, it's, but it's more kind of a graphical, logical, decoding of something um, whereas I prefer color when it's used in an evocative sense like color is a powerful emotional healing space within itself um, the Tibetan monks for example in their monasteries use depth of field they use very deep colors to create unsettling effects which cause an expansion of consciousness for example they use um, like a very fine egg tempura mix of a color on a wall and they will layer up this color hundreds and hundreds of time and you know in a very very um, time consuming process that only monastics have got the time and the meditational discipline to be able to execute but the uh, the finished effect is a color that is not graphically solid so when you see like a pantone color there's a solid bang to it you know the surface is there and it's like bang it's graphical and you'll see this in modern architecture and that that kind of pantone block color it can look cool it can look fun um but it's very kind of artificial looking whereas this effect of deeply laying layering color up again and again starts to get an effect more akin to this blue mist that we have here on the forest floor it's an effect where your eye is not able to settle onto the surface of the um, physical thing that's there, be it a wall or whatever, um, and it creates this sense of depth, the eye is unsettled, and there's a sense of expansion or expansiveness which is very calming, very relaxing, very beautiful, and very experiential um, uh, thing to participate in. And again, I was talking, to, talking about, with my clients, and we were looking at, you know, there's, this, there's a, a falsehood at the moment that you know that all spaces are meant to be light and airy and white and modern and that's just it's nonsense really uh, that's just it's just a trend that's, that's lasted and people have got a kind of attachment now to having light and airy spaces and there's a sort of notion that you cannot use a dark color or a rich color or a bold color in a small space um, but again I, I would use kind of natural elements as examples that actually you can use very intense colors uh, in small spaces you can use colors which create effects which um, which are evocative which unsettle the eye which create imagination which create atmosphere that's the important word here creating atmosphere through color and that can really create a space which is different from just you know kind of going into Ikea and looks cool and a space that really nurtures you um, in for your own well-being, contemplation, all that kind of great stuff. So I'm going to leave you now. Millie's sniffing around.